Welcome to the History Lord channel. There's that lovely pan down from James Eyre. That was number 10 Trinity Square and that used to be the headquarters of the Port of London Authority. And that building there was opened in the 1920s. It's now a Four Seasons Hotel. But today we're going to be talking about this particular garden and Tower Hill. Two juxtapositions of war memorials and a scaffold. This is the story. Welcome to London. This is the first of the war memorials in Trinity Gardens on Tower Hill. This is the Mercantile Marine Memorial. It's a dedication to 12,000 merchant seamen who had no physical grave and who were lost at sea. It was dedicated in December 1928 and it was designed by Sir Edwin Luchins, who also designed the wonderful cenotaph in Whitehall. This is the second of the two war memorials here. This is the Merchant Seamen's Memorial for those who perished in the Second World War. There are 24,000 names of merchant seamen who have no discernible grave here. It was dedicated in November of 1955 and it was designed by Sir Edward Mouth. And as my grandfather was a merchant seaman, this holds a very special place for me. Thankfully, he came back. But Tower Hill is more famous for something much more macabre, and that is executions. And this is the site of the old execution scaffold. Now, several hundred people over the years have had their heads removed from their bodies because they'd uh, committed treason or other acts like that against the king. The people who were executed here were usually noblemen and uh, they weren't executed, as some people think, inside the Tower of London, but outside here as a public spectacle. So people like Sir Thomas More, uh, the Chancellor for Henry VIII, who refused to recant his Catholicism, was beheaded here. Thomas Cromwell, another Chancellor of Henry VIII, was beheaded here as well. One of the most famous executions here was George Bolin, who was the brother of Anne Boleyn, the wife of Henry VIII, that man again, and uh, he was also accused of treason and actually having an affair with his own sister. Whether that was true or not, we don't know, but that was the evidence at the time. But the most famous person who was executed here has his name down here, and that was James Scott, the Duke of Monmouth the illegitimate son of Charles II who, sat the, who tried to get the Monmouth Rebellion going and try and depose his uncle James II from the throne. It failed and he was executed here. Now as tradition was at the time, the person being executed would hand over a bag of gold and silver to the executioner as an act of retrition and uh, as an act of forgiveness, one of their last acts on earth before they were beheaded. Well, the Duke of Monmouth refused to do that and Jack Ketch, who was the executioner at the time, got a little bit disheartened. He didn't make a very good job of it and uh, started slashing. Let's just say he didn't need a spike for his head to be on at the end. He probably needed a toast rack. But there you go. Thankfully, in about 1747, 1748, this became, ceased to become a place of execution. It seems strange to say thank you for watching today and we do hope you enjoy these videos but we really do hope you enjoy the videos and if you do please subscribe if you want to know when videos are uploaded there's a little bell just down below that tells you if you want to see what we do outside of these videos please go to historylord.co.uk see about the walking tour of london or have a look down below and see about james's channel which is last line films thanks for watching we'll see you very soon it's getting a bit chilly gonna go and warm up